Welcome to the Tyranit video. In this video we're going to carry on from the previous videos where we installed the firmware, we created a simple model and then we created a model with extra channels and set those up manually so that it could control something like a multi-rotor. In this video what we're going to do is show you how powerful the OpenTX software is when you combine it with the radio and how much simpler it can be to use this interface to program and set up your radio rather than use the switches, controls and buttons on the front as we've been doing so far. Now the benefit of doing it this way is it can be a little bit easier. The downside is of course is that you may not always have access to a computer at the flight line so still being able to access, edit and update the models as you're flying through the radio at the flying field will still be really important. So we're going to use the OpenTX Companion 2.0. This is the software that we installed at the start of the series back in video 1 and we're going to use it to actually edit and change the model settings. So the first thing we need to do is to power on the radio in EEPROM mode. We need to hold the two bottom trims to the middle, turn it on. Then we need to plug the USB cable into the back of the radio and into the PC and then start OpenTX. Once we've done that, we can go into Read Write and we can say Read Models and Settings from Radio. And it'll read in the EEPROM and give us the list of all of the models that we have on there at the moment. So we're going to play with the CC3D demo that we used in our last video because hopefully if you're watching these in series that will all be fresh in your memory. So if I just double click that, it'll bring up another screen and here are all the settings that we did when we set up the model on the radio itself. So these tabs relate generally to the tabs that are already on the radio. As you can see there aren't 12, um, there's a couple that have been merged together. So we have our setup information with the timer, the throttle sources. We can also see at the bottom here what radio, what module we're using. Then we have things like the heli setups where if we wanted to we could do things like set the heli swashes up. We have the flight modes that we're going to cover later in the series. Then we have our inputs that we set and this would look very familiar. Here's the throttle aileron elevator rudder, the mode and buzz that we set up to control the multicopter. We then have the mixes that are controlling the outputs for the model that we made. The servos menu where we edited the minimum and maximum servo limits for channel 1 which was the throttle. Just give that a name then that will remind me which one it is. Then we have curves which we'll talk a little bit about in this video. Logical switches which we'll come back to again when we get to telemetry. Special functions which is where we can do things like set up voice and audio alerts and then finally telemetry. So let's just very quickly have a look at some of these inputs and mixes that we set up. So if I just double click on any of these inputs that we've set we can see and change things here. So we can change things like what the curve is and that's what we'll play with in a second and all the other elements. That's not as interesting as the mixes. The mixes are quite fun and it gets a lot easier. So if I just double click on that mix, here are all of the settings for that mix for the throttle in the model that we have. It's also quite handy because if you right click on any of these you can actually do things like duplicate them which can be very handy. You can also delete them or move them around too. So let's talk a little bit about curves because curves is something we haven't talked about yet but it's something that you use a lot in your radio and they can be used for anything from setting how a control works but more traditionally if you're used to another kind of radio you can use it to do things like set throttle curves. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up two curves that you would expect to see on something like a helicopter. We're going to set up curve one as a pretty standard linear throttle and we're going to set up curve two as a throttle that you'd use for something in helicopters called idle up where you have the throttle pretty much full tilt most of the time. So the way that we're going to edit these is we're going to click on the curve that we're interested in. So as, you, as I'm clicking on them you'll see the number change at the top. We'll edit curve one first. Loads of different ways and options that you can pick here to edit curves. Here is um, a list. Well I like five point curve because that's pretty much what I'm used to so we'll keep with that. You can decide whether or not you want custom X or fixed X. X is just whether or not you can move the point that you're editing 
um, on the x-axis. So at the moment, this will only allow me to move the point up or down. If I go custom X, then it'll actually allow me to pull that point all over the place. I tend to stay with fixed X, that just works for me. Now, the values as I change each of these points, you'll notice in the top right hand corner, the values are being shown here. So obviously it's gonna go from 100 to 100, and what I might do is flatten it out slightly around the midpoint, because that might be nicer for having fine control over the throttle. We'll have it as a smooth and we'll call the curve normal mode. Okay, so there's one. Next curve we'll look at then is curve two and this for a helicopter, we could do a very simple three point curve and we're gonna put both ends at 100% of course, you wouldn't use this for a normal model like a multi-rotor, but for helicopter pilots, this is something that they use all the time so that they are just controlling the pitch of the blades rather than the speed of the engine. So let's say it looks like that. Brilliant. So now we have two curves. We have curve one and curve two. So why would you do that? Well, what you might want to do is have a switch on your transmitter that changes the throttle curves that you're using. So if we now go back to the mixes menu, what we can do is assign these curves to a channel. So I'll actually edit the throttle channel, which is the first one. And rather than say the curve is just diff or exponential, we're actually gonna choose curve at the bottom. And then we are allowed to choose which of the curves we've already set up. Now you'll notice here that there's actually two lists, one with an exclamation mark in front of it and one without. The exclamation mark is actually an inverse of the curve that you've got, so you don't want to choose those, unless you really want to for a reason. We're going to choose curve one. Now we're going to assign this to a switch so we can change these things over. We're going to find switch F, and we're going to put it in the back position. We'll give us curve one. We'll duplicate that. And the second one will open. This time though, we'll make it curve two, which is that idle up curve, and we'll change the switch position to B down. Okay, so now if we go into the simulator, you can see here the throttle is our channel one, our switch F is in the back position, so we have that throttle that kind of is a little bit less sensitive around the middle, that's that first curve that we created, curve one. If, however, I flick SF into the other position, and as I move the throttle up, there's that other curve that we created, curve two, which is like an idle up curve where the throttle just dips in the middle. So there we go, we have a normal curve, but that's flattened out in the middle to help with the hover point. And then if we flick the switch, we get the curve two, which is that idle up switch. So I'm happy with that. So let's go and save it back to the model. What I can do is close this out and then go back and actually write the models and settings to the radio. So hopefully, as you can see here, it's a fantastic interface for you to set up and change your models. Also allows you to import models and upload models from other places as well. So this isn't just a control for doing things like updating your firmware. If you have a complicated setup on your model, and later on in the series, we'll be doing a mini series on custom mixes for things like differential thrust on two engine planes, for things like Elevon mixing and others. You want to set those up, you can come into here and rather than sit and play with the buttons on the front of your radio, you can work through here. And also, I will start to make some of those custom mixes available as files you can download and upload into your own OpenTX Companion 2.0 so you can have a look at them and it'll save you having to duplicate everything in the video. So I've just disconnected my radio so that I can show you two final things in OpenTX Companion. You don't have to be connected to the radio in order to play with the models and try things out. You can actually do it offline. So you can either open a model that you've already got or you can create new ones as well. So here is the offline version. I'm not connected to the radio right now. If I wanted, I could set up a model very quickly. If I just double click on one, I can absolutely go through setting up a model type here through this interface. Uh, the reason the helicopter isn't 
uh, available right now is in this release of it the firmware will allow you to set that up but we can absolutely select something like a multi-rotor we'll call it um, multi-test click next and exactly like we did on the radio it'll ask us where we want all the different well, I'll just accept the defaults for now we'll click next interestingly it does give us a couple more options now and there we have our model so now very quickly if I wanted to play or try something out and I have the computer with me but not the radio then I could work on this and play with it so the last thing to show you then is the general settings so on top of this list of all of the models that are on the radio we can double click general settings and these are the general settings that are for the radio for all models and we have setup trainer and calibration so again if you wanted to change things in here about the battery voltages the range how long the splash screen is shown at startup all that kind of great stuff then it's all in here and again it's a little bit easier than sometimes doing it on the radio itself there's also the trainer setup and nicely the calibration is in here too. Now calibration is something whenever you change the firmware or you change a control inside the radio you should run through the calibration routine as well. So this is really nice to be able to access this information and along with setting up your models be able to change this too. So hopefully that helps those of you that are interested in some of the more advanced features of the mixer, but also it's given you a quick introduction to some of the more powerful features of things like the OpenTX Companion. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and happy flying. <laughs>